Hey, all right. Got a little bit of a late start tonight, but uh, here I am. Uh, Jake Roberts, the host of Ghosts of Bacon. Thanks for joining us tonight, gang. Uh, have a really, I, I, what I hope is going to be a really, really good show uh, for you this evening on this Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all of the fathers out there, uh, including my own. I know you're out there watching Dad, so you do every week. Thanks for thanks for popping in. Um, special treat this week. Um, I have none other than Jeff Freeman uh, as my co-host tonight. Uh, he is the host of uh, the Curse of Oak Island and Beyond. Everyone, uh, give a big uh, welcome to my friend Jeff. Uh, Freeman for joining us tonight, riding shotgun with me, Jeff. Thanks so much, buddy. Um, oh, no problem at all. I was uh, I was honored to be asked when you uh, reached out to me. I was like, really? You want? To... I've never done the co-host side before. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, that's just it. You know, it's like um, I, I kind of hesitated to ask you simply because, it, you know, you, you you've been a host of you know your podcast and, and you have such a you know a prodigious presence uh, with. Um, uh, the Curse of Oak Island and beyond. Uh, your your group is huge, and you have a huge following, rightfully so, because you do just an amazing job with your show. And I'm I'm truly uh, honored and humbled that you would uh, agree to <laughs> ride shotgun with me tonight. So thanks a lot, man. It, it's such no a big. Deal. I appreciate you very much. Um, so listen, gang. Uh, you know, the last three episodes. Uh, this is the third episode. Um, you know, uh, you know that John Edwards has, has been helping. He couldn't uh, join me this evening. Um, and you know, he's really good at just, uh, keeping me fo focused in the sense of, uh, when people have questions in real time, uh, when I'm as, as our friend Linda would say, uh, when I'm being as clear as mud, uh, John usually pumps the brakes for me a little bit and says, Whoa, 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 Jake, hold on. Go back and explain this. And um, so, you know, that it's a huge help to me because, you know, I can get so myopic and, and so focused on just what, you know, the, the, the cipher that I have in front of me where suddenly I just start going off on all of the background and then, and the, you know, the history of it, uh, where people say, Whoa, whoa time out, Jake, you know, let, let's, let's pump the brakes a little bit. And, uh, explain a few things. So um, I, I'm really glad you're able to be with me tonight, uh, Jeff, sh just simply because, you know, I, I definitely need that element in my life. <laughs> uh, and, and I'm one of those people that are going, oh, 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 hold on a second, hold on a second. It's going past me. I was, I kept up with you for a while and exactly. now you lost me. So we got to back up a little bit because the, the information that I, I find that I love, by the way, the information that you put out, because it is so interesting how it all ties together and but like you said you've done this for so long you can look at these numbers and it already starts to click in your brain because you can put together what cipher it is right and right. for those of us that are a little slower <laughs> with that uh so you know when you start running through it sometimes it does it, it speeds by too quickly and i'm like oh wait a minute Come, you got to back up a little bit but that's the beauty of it is that you do explain it in such a way that does make sense to me when you start explaining simple ciphers and resort and yeah. reverse ciphers and how they tie together and how you can use the different numbers. Uh, you know, uh, a B is a two number two here, but a Y is a number two over here in reverse. Right. So, and you can use those interchange the B and the Y, not just the two. So it, yeah. uh, it all starts to click and I start to get it, but it's so fascinating. So, and you do a very good job of presenting it, but Thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> Somebody I mentioned it. I it looks like I have a sunburn. Yeah, I do. I, I was out fishing yesterday and uh pretty much oh, all day. Did, did catch a few fish, and that's why I'm all sunburned. Can I, do, uh, what, what catch? Anything good? Uh, a lot of perch. We got a lot of perch. We were nice. fishing in the Taquamanon River and we got a lot of perch. So yeah, Ooh. so uh, nice perch fish fry was had yeah, by I, all. So. <laughs> you know, spent my childhood um uh fishing on Lake Ontario and uh hmm catching a bucket of perch at a time uh -huh. which is wonderful wonderful fish all right so look, just looking at um you know all the uh, usual uh, people here in the chat uh mary jenny jan uh you know all you guys thank you so much i appreciate you joining us this evening and um like i said uh got a little bit of a late start but um 
you know, going to, uh, you know, do a presentation this evening to demonstrate how um, Champlain's map of 1612 actually has directions encrypted in it that lead directly to our favorite island in the North Atlantic, <laughs> Oak Island, Nova Scotia. It, it, and it's um, amazing um, the way this was done. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, this is just actually uh, the initial part of the Oak Island treasure maps, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And so it, and it, what's nice is, Jeff, you, you had talked about how, uh, you know, when I get going with the ciphers and so on. Tonight, all we need um, are, are just a handful of, of, of cipher signatures, if you will, uh, to be familiar with in order to understand what uh, Bacon was really doing with this map. And so those of you who haven't um, already watched episode one of, of this series uh, and episode two, episode one actually explains the connection between uh, Sir Francis Bacon and uh, Samuel de Champlain in that map. Uh, episode two was a simple uh, Q&A uh, that uh, John and I did a couple of weeks ago. Just, just answering questions uh, that because we suddenly had a ton of questions coming to us through private message, um, and and really great questions were asked, and I hope that I gave some adequate answers. And so, if you haven't checked those out, all of the unanswered questions that will be happening this evening uh, are answered by those other two episodes. So, if you haven't checked them out, make sure you go over to uh, you can actually check them, uh, watch them. Uh, on the Ghosts of Bacon uh, group uh, site uh, under videos, or you can go to YouTube, my YouTube channel, uh, The Ghosts of Bacon, and uh, you'll be able to find them there. So, so I'm looking at, um, yeah, Linda says, or you could go a lot slower. Yeah, I'm going to try to. <laughs> <laughs> I, trust me, I'm going to try to make sure I pump the brakes this evening so yep. that... Uh, I'll, I'll remind him because he'll start to lose me and I'll be like, wait, 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 we got to uh, yeah. back up. <laughs> and, and, and again, you know, that's exactly what I need you guys for because um, otherwise I'm just going to, you know, forge ahead. Uh, so here's what we're going to do, gang. Oh, thanks so much, Doreen. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, going to go ahead and get this going here. All right. That coming through. Okay, Jeff. Yep. Yep. Looks great. All right. So listen, gang, um, what I did, uh, previously in terms of, you know, just reviewing the process that we've gone through so far, the way this has worked over the last couple of years, three years, uh, first of all, I decrypted this plaque. This plaque contains multiple ciphers in it, cipher messages. And, uh, within them were multiple references to Samuel Day Champlain, and I, I discussed, uh, you know, the bulk of those in episode one of this series. In part one, I, I talked about how um, the cipher message refers specifically to Samuel de Champlain, his books, his illustrations, and his map. And then when I went to those pictures, when I went to this map, suddenly I discovered a bunch of clues that corroborate all of the messages about Sammy Day Champlain. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so what I did, I then went through and looked at the 1612 map and uh, identified all of the clues. And so you all know what I do by now. Um, I, I just look for the clues. I look for the messages and I just follow the clues where they lead me. And you're going to see that these clues all lead to Oak Island, Nova Scotia. So what I can do is look at the information that is, appears on this chart, this navigational chart, and then chart a course. And as we follow those directions, and, and then later look at the cipher texts of the messages themselves, they will put an X on the map. Um, I encourage everyone who's watching this evening to go to my website, uh, and it's uh, www.theghostsofbacon.com. And click on resources. 
and you will find the 1612 Champlain map. I encourage you to to open that up and zoom in on it on the different areas that I'll be discussing this this evening. It's uh, it'll be much easier for you to uh, be able to look at at some of the things that I'm going to be discussing and, and explaining this evening. And so uh, you have access to all of that on my website at theghostsofbacon.com. And That's so the th first uh, I've got it up now. It's the very first uh, thing that comes up on the maps. It's right under resources. It goes to maps. And Champlain 1612 is the very first uh, item that comes up. So easy to click on and boom, you get that right there. So, yeah, it, thanks, Jeff. And this is what you're going to see. Uh, the difference is you're going to be able to zoom in on all of these different areas. Um, and we're going to be focused on Nova Scotia right here. Um, maybe at some future point. Uh, I, I don't know if my uh, friend Bill Smith is watching this evening, but maybe some other time we'll focus on this area of Newfoundland. Uh, but we'll get to it. So um, in order to navigate, uh, you have to, uh, you know, have coordinates, you have to have, you know, a course. And so I started looking at this map through the lens of a cryptanalysis. And so I start looking for clues. It, it, and with uh, this type of situation, with, what we're looking at here is a form of pictographic cipher in other words a, a, a cipher and picture form as well as uh you know prominent alignments and prominent features and one of the you know keys here on this map are is this compass or, or caliper and this ruler that those are uh some of the primary navigational clues but also we have very precise lines that appear on this map and these these lines were drawn specifically uh, to be measured. And so um, it was really, uh, when, when you start looking at them and start making measurements and, and, and looking at alignments, suddenly more clues start to appear. So when I look at an image like this and you have these calipers with, that come to these points, I'm wondering where do these points lead? Where do the tips of the calipers or the compass, what do they point to? And so in order to figure this out, I realized that these lines here um, at the top of the calipers uh, form an X. And uh, where do they meet that as a center point is the center point of these calipers. And so what I did was I used that as a starting point. And I drew lines extending outward through the points of this compass. And as it turns out, um, these lines pointed to the legend down at the bottom of the map and uh, to a couple of uh, key areas. Here you can see the indications of, of what these lines pointed to. You can see the illustration of it here. There will be a close-up of it here coming up very soon. But here as a concept, you can see that I created the X here, and then I just used that as a, the central point and then drew lines pointing directly at just to see where these uh, lines of the compass point. This interior angle, by the way, gang, uh, is exactly 67 degrees. 67, uh, those of you who have been following my work know, <laughs> is the cipher signature of the name Francis in symbol cipher. Now, this left leg points directly to the O, letter O in Port du Rossignol. Okay. And this is actually uh, a letter O in the legend itself. And so the letter O is actually a symbol of light in terms of, of you know, looking down from above. It, a light shining down, you have a horizon, right? Uh, you know, it's a perfect circle looking at the light from above. And this is, you know, looking at the letter A as a symbol of light. Uh, from the side shining downward, which will be important here in a moment. Also, I wanted to point out that uh, I noticed that this was also a misspelling of the word Rossignol. Uh, while the port was actually named after Captain Rossignol uh, of, of France, uh, it's important to note that um, it was also the family name of France's greatest cryptographers. Uh, at the time. And so 
Uh, obviously, the misspelling, uh, along with understanding that um, that family name is very important when it comes to cryptography, it, obviously, it, it, it heightened my interest. Uh, when I did a calculation of the name, of course, all of you know what I do. And yeah, there were some significant uh, numbers there. But just keeping it simple tonight, um, the right leg of this compass points to number 18, the letter A in the name Champlain. And so we have an A and an O. And so uh, one of the things that keep coming up as as um, signpost of the Rosy Cross is the idea of the Alpha and Omega, A and O. And again, both symbols of light. One is you know, from the side, the other is looking top down. And so this obviously caught my interest as yet another clue. This means that we have um, alpha as a starting point, omega as the uh, final conclusion of that starting point. Here you can see the close up here. Wow. X there, the two lines starting point pointing down to the O of Port du Rossignol, A of Champlain. So one of the other or two of the other uh, major features of this map are the compass roses. There are two of them on the map. Um, and so with a compass rose, normally the way they're constructed is there are 32 lines emanating outward from that central point. Uh, in this case is, you know, right here at the tip of his nose or the bridge of his nose. Um, 32, uh, 360 divided by 32 is 11 point. Two, five. So normally these uh, the angles between each of these lines is 11.25 degrees. Now, both of these compass roses have, you know, 32 lines emanating out from. Them. So therefore, all things being equal, especially the uh, uh, division of 360, they should be at 11.25. Now, what this drew my attention to was the idea that there should be a couple of numbers that are very close to Baconian numbers, particularly 67.5. 67 is Francis in simple cipher. Um, and 33.75 uh, and 33 is Bacon in simple cipher. And so, but when you're dealing with the precision of Bacon and the kinds of things that he did, uh, these numbers are not close enough. Close is never close enough when it comes to these values. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I, I decided to just draw some lines here and measure above and below the parallel to see how close to 67.5 and 33.75 they were. And what I found were multiple examples of these angles being exactly 67. Wow. That's not a coincidence. <laughs> right yeah right this is not a coincidence at all and so and and so they should be off a little bit now i did this uh and this is one of the questions that uh when i did my my second presentation in the war room uh, marty asked me he says well jake did you do did you measure these angles you know physically this was not this presentation by the way uh this was the invisible college presentation and i said well you know i i printed it out and i did it physically because i wanted to have you know my eyes on it he says, well, you know, couldn't you adjust a little bit? Could someone actually fudge these to make it fit the way they wanted to? And I had to be honest. I said, well, you know, if someone were so inclined, yeah, I guess they could. If they were so inclined, they could actually do that. I didn't, but but yeah, they could. And so with this, what I did, these lines are drawn with precision. Okay, they are, they are drawn uh, with the intention of being measured. Okay, so I did it physically and then I did it electronically, digitally, uh, in, in Photoshop, just to measure the angles. And they are exactly 67 and 33. So, wow. uh, which, which we know is Francis and Bacon and symbol cipher. Yeah. Yep. So wow. the right side compass rose here, here you see the conventional one. Uh, it, it's not the sun with a face in it. Um, it's a, what I call the traditional compass rose. Um, there is a line now, if you remember, Port du Rossignol is letter O, and here it is labeled on the map, okay, right here in this location. You can't really see it in this image very well, but um, that's letter O, that's Port du Rossignol. And this line going upward, I decided to measure that angle um, above 
the parallel. And I'm like, well, if I were here and I was going to set course to Port de Rossignol, what angle would I have to travel at? And here you can see it's exactly 33 degrees. <laughs> so we have, <laughs> you know, lines pointing to Champlain, uh, the person uh, supposedly uh, responsible for creating this map. And then you have uh, the other leg of the compass pointing to Port de Rossignol. And here you have this compass rose with an angle of 33 degrees pointing directly to Port de Rossignol, 33 degrees above parallel. Bacon. Reminder, it should be 33.75. It isn't. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, is there a counterpart below, you know, that links also to the legend, just like the compass did? And sure enough, you know, as I started to calculate and, and, and measure these angles, this angle is 67 degrees exactly, and it points to the sea in Champlain. So we're starting to see these links uh, between uh, the line 18 of, of, you know, Champlain as well as Port de Rossignol. So this, this means that these ideas are, are obviously connected and linked. So as, as an aside note, I think that is really inter interesting. Uh, it, when you calculate the value of the name Samuel in Simple Cipher, it's also 67. So I thought that was kind of neat. Um, also, 18, the number 18 itself uh, is, is S in simple cipher, which can be the initial of the name Samuel, but it's also G in reverse cipher. And G, we know, is a symbol of the name Bacon. So he's drawing our attention to this particular port um, on purpose. So I'm assuming that you're going to be telling us as to why this is a case. Absolutely. Absolutely. You get it. You I mean, get it's it. obvious he is. He's pointing us to this. It's very obvious. And, and it's amazing that, and again, I, I mentioned this before, how his mind, I, I can't even imagine how his mind worked because he probably saw this kind of like you do. Uh, in Better his, than I do. He, he created it. I, I could just right. say. Right. So he's he seeing this it. rather yeah. than what you and I would see letters on a page or Yes. Or lines, his brain is looking at it in a completely different way. Obviously, Absolutely. to be able to do this, it's amazing. And and it, I'm so glad you brought that up, Jeff, because in order to plan out this map, what he had to do was he knew he was going to be putting these words in these certain positions. He had the map drawn out ahead of time in terms of the okay. angles, and then he filled in the words after the fact to make them all aligned. How brilliant is that? I, um, yeah. So, I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you get it. You get it. This this alignment is is obviously highly significant. Right. So even more so, uh, one of the things that um, you know, uh, William, I know you're watching Jason uh, and I and and uh, John do is when we see an alignment that's significant and it crosses these specific letters. The very first thing I do is do some simple math, and I add their values in each of the cipher systems. And when we do it in simple cipher, these letters equal 33, which is bacon in simple cipher. <laughs> reverse cipher, they actually add up to 108, which is Francis in reverse cipher. And K cipher, this is the one that blew me away. This, is, this was the clincher for me, uh, Jeff, uh, when I, I was working with this. Uh, we add the S and the C. That equals 47. That's the value of Mary in reverse cipher. That's Bacon's real mom, Mary, Queen yeah, of Scots. Mary, Queen of Scots, yeah. We add the D to that, and then all of a sudden we have 77, which is Rex Bacon in simple cipher. We add the E, 31, and all of a sudden we have that value of 108 again of Francis in reverse cipher. Wow. Lastly, we add uh, the value of C, which is 29 in K cipher, and it totals 137, which is the 33rd prime number see that's what i mean to be able to see this <laughs> and know this ahead of time and then write it in such a way to make it all he he i think it, instead of the letters he's seeing the cipher if you will yeah. all of them together and then At he the puts it together time. to just meet that that's you know it, you know uh, you know john really well and, and he doesn't say it this way but i'm going to say it this way for the sake of our podcast you can't make this stuff up 
No, <laughs> right? no, yeah. Yeah. No. And, and here's how I suddenly now I, I can see this stuff because when I see the word C backwards, S E E, I wonder what's after it. Right. So mm -hmm. here's what I did. C G N A R. N -A -R. So we know that G is bacon. So I added the letters N-A-R. In simple cipher, they total, as you can see, 31. Uh, that is the value of Rex in reverse cipher. Uh, in reverse cipher, uh, they total 44, which is Rex in simple cipher. <laughs> in K cipher, they total 57, which is uh, the triple tau, uh, T-T-T -T -T in simple cipher. Um, all signatures of bacon. So the message is C bacon Rex or C bacon triple tau. I just, I don't know. I, I just, I, I look at this and I, it, it just boggles my mind. So in my mind at this point, and, and <clears throat> gang, if, if you remember episode one of this whole series, if you go back and rewatch that, all of the anagrams that appear on this map, all of the other uh, signatures, and I, I didn't even give you all of them uh, in a couple of weeks in the last month. Um, this right here, this for me was total confirmation that uh, the cipher texts were correct. So let's look at the right side compass rows for a moment. Um, you know, we, we, we know that it contains these quote unquote off lines of 33 degrees and 67 degrees. And we know that mistakes are always clues in. in uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, Amy, that's what Amy was talking about. Yep. Yep. A Amy's spot on. So we have Bacon and Francis encoded in this. It, 33 degrees points to Port du Rossignol. And as you said, Jeff, and you, you acknowledged and saw right away, uh, he's trying to highlight uh, this location for a very specific reason. The 67 degrees points to the C in Champlain. In other words, C this. Um, and again, these points coincide with uh, the compass or calipers, uh, that, those alignments. And so I, I, I do this again just to kind of repeat and, and um, reinforce, if you will, and summarize what we've done up to this point. Now, as I said, this indicates a connection between these two and uh, these two ideas. So obviously there's a significance here that's intended to be uh, drawing our attention to. So let's take a look to see what happens when we look at the left side compass rows, the sun with a face in it. Now, uh, there was a, a, a prominent Oak Island uh, theorist who told me that uh, the sun represent in the, on this map represents gold, the alchemical symbol of gold, and it performs no other purpose whatsoever. I'm going to do away with that nonsense right here, right now, and you'll see it. So what I did was I started looking for the bacon degrees, just like appeared in the right-hand side. And sure enough, here we have 33 degrees exactly, not 33, you know, 0.75, but 33 and also 67 appears down below. Now, the 33 degrees leads to the words uh, that are French for Bay of Many Isles. Now, um, James McQuiston has maintained uh, for quite some time that uh, the original name of Mahone Bay was the Bay of Many Isles. Um, and I, I pointed this out. Uh, in my first war room appearance and, and uh, Doug Crowell and I were talking about it. And he said, he says, well, you know, that the, the Bay of many else is actually farther East than Mahone Bay. And I asked him, I said, well, isn't that because, you know, all other cartographers after Champlain just copied his map and put it over there because that's where we see these words. He says, well, yeah, <laughs> well, what you're going to find is uh, that is not labeling the location of the Bay of many Isles. It's a part of the cipher. Um, the locations are in the legend and they're designated by letters and numbers. Those are the navigable locations that you can navigate to on this map are, are in the legend. All of these other words on the map, they're part of a cipher. It's really pretty cool. So uh, in our 67 degree line below parallel leads once again to letter O, Port du Rossignol. And again, this correlates with the compass. And so, you know, I, I'm wondering what other connections do we have here? You can see it here, um, exactly 67 degrees, and it points to the L in Port du Rossignol. So one of the things that uh, John and I talk a lot about, John uh, Edwards, is 
um, redundancy, redundancy of the message. They, 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 um, he, Bacon and and at all, you know, his entire group, they wanted to make sure that these messages got through. So everything contained redundancy. Uh -huh. And so, uh, what other connections were here? I, I had to find out. Well, um, let's try a traditional uh, navigational angle. The forty-five degree angle is is one that you know you would expect to find in a uh, rose compass. And here you see at 45 degrees from this one, uh, it points directly to letter O, Port du Rossignol. And you're also going to see that um, we have another connection to the Bay of Many Isles using these conventional degrees. And so our left sun points to the letter O here. Uh, the right compass rose points directly to the Bay of Many Isles at 45 degrees. So what this told me is that the conventional navigation rules apply here. So we can use the this navigational chart to navigate to Port du Rossignol and then use these clues to navigate to somewhere significant. And where are we going to navigate? Well, we can navigate from Port du Rossignol, which is designated in the legend as, as a navigable port, a place where you can actually travel to using this map. We can travel from there to the Bay of Many Isles, wherever that happens to be. I'll let you uh, imagine where that is. And it looks as if it's the, the um, angle or the bearing that we would use that joins these two locations is 33 degrees. The mistake in the map. And so what other navigational tools do we have that we can bring to bear to this? Well, it, it's, it's that compass, the caliper there at the center. Um, and so I, I started playing around with this idea. And so in order to figure out what to do with it, I started looking for other clues in the map. Uh, we also have the ruler uh, that appears at the center of the map um, under the caliper. Uh, we have the wind rose, both wind roses. We have the angles that they are depicting. Uh, we have how they interact with the legend. So how do we put all these pieces together in order to figure out what's going on here? Um, the last thing and the most important thing, for example, the Bay of Many Isles, these written names written on the map are not place markers. The letters in the legend are. So what role do they play? What's their purpose? Well, as I indicated earlier, they're a part of the cipher uh, uh, clues that lead hopefully to Oak Island, as you'll see. So I started to take a closer look, particularly at the textual uh, information, the textual evidence. In the upper left and upper right-hand corner, I went over, I think in episode one, uh, the anagrams of Rosy Cross appearing in the le upper left-hand corner. In the upper right-hand corner, we have um, this really cool feature, which is the ST connection. If you look in multiple cases, the S and T have this curious little feature connecting. Mm -hmm. them. You have this curved line over them. No one, it, it, and I, I've researched this uh, pretty deeply. I've never seen anyone really have a, a rational, logical explanation for this. It always involves uh, uh, speculation. Um, first of all, if you add S and T together, it's 37, which is the value of Dauphin in short cipher. We all know that uh, Francis Bacon was the Dauphin of France. Um, it's also the value of the name Drake in simple cipher. Um, but why joining S and T? Uh, there, there's another um, explanation, too. If we think of uh, that curved line being a reversal of sorts, um, and we do our substitution system between simple and reverse, like you you mentioned at the very beginning of the show, Jeff. Um, T can be F, S is G, F, G, F, Bacon. So um, was this the reason behind it? And I, I think all of those things are, are a part of it. But m the more I looked around the map, then I spotted this. On the way to Port de Rossignol, here you see letter O and the two lines that meet right there as a nexus. Here we have this really interesting construction. It's mouton, which is uh, French for sheep. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, the point of sheep or sheep point here. 
But what we really have is the word Tau, T-A-U. And this P is not a P at all. It, it doesn't join at the top. It's called a Tzadi. This is a Hebrew letter of the Hebrew alphabet that makes a T-S sound as in Tz. You know, so here again, we have this connection of T and S. So I, I found this to be very, very interesting. Uh, and then we have, you know, even though this is the French word, we have sheep, which starts with an S and tau next to it. We have this line pointing to Port de Resnel, separating it. And so when we calculate the value of Mouton, um, 92 in, in both uh, simple and K, um, which is the name Bacon in reverse cipher, 58 is actually Shakespeare in short cipher. Um, so, you know, as soon as I see this, I'm like, ah, okay, once again, I'm on the right track here. I'm just following uh, the clues for the evening. Uh, the name Champlain in French, what, one interpretation of it is field of wool. And so here we have a sheep connection to the name Champlain. And we have Tau, the truth. Uh, the Tsade uh, letter is actually the forerunner of our T. So we have a double Tau there. So again, another TSST connection. And so looking for the next juxtaposition of, of where these clues are going to lead us, um, that's when right next to it, here you see the Tsade here on the right, was the Isle Aulu Lorraine, which is um, the Isle of Sea Lions, is the usual interpretation. Now, apparently, you know, those animals are in that area on an island near there, uh, in that general vicinity of of uh, Nova Scotia. But just below that location is actually a picture of a sea lion with this label right next to it. And here you can see it spelled completely differently. And, you know, when I see a different spelling and here there, it, it's the same person making the map, gang. Okay. So we can't say, oh, you know, spelling wasn't, you know, uh, a thing. Right. Well, if it's the same person doing it, <laughs> spell it the same way every time if it means the same thing right, right. so yep. um i reached out to my colleagues in the french department uh at where i work and i i, I approached each of them independently and i didn't tell them what i was asking i, I, I didn't tell them i was tell, asking the other uh colleague uh for their opinion and they both independently said the exact same thing that moraines connoted sailor or mariner as opposed to the animal of sea lion. Huh. So this really, you know, piqued my interest. So I did a little bit of research and I found out that there was a small group of Dutch privateers who referred to themselves as the lions of the sea. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and we'll get to my, our, 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 our mutual friend, uh, uh, Bill Smith here in a moment, uh, Jeff. Um, so, Knowing that Drake and Francis Bacon were, were you know, obviously uh, privateers and, and uh, attacking the Spanish on a regular basis, uh, they were working closely with those uh, Dutch privateers as well in a mutual war against uh, Spain uh, in their Spanish raids. Um, so this this at initially in my, my initial thoughts were, OK, so maybe they they had discovered, you know, uh, this location of this Isle of the Lions of the Sea, if you will. Um, uh, through through those connections with with the Dutch privateers, and then Bill Smith on your show, Jeff, uh, with you and and, and uh, John, he he said that when James the first, that's Francis Bacon's younger half brother, uh, decreed that uh, they, he signed a peace treaty with uh, Spain, and the privateers no longer had a, a legal right to plunder the Spanish. Many of those privateers jumped ship, so to speak, uh -huh. forgive me, but they started working under the flag of Denmark and the Danish. Uh, and, and Bill and I have been uh, talking here. Uh, we, we, we talked for probably almost an hour and a half yesterday uh, via Zoom, and, and we've been uh, kind of collaborating on a few pieces of information. But uh, on, this, on this note, you know, he, he was very explicit. He says, oh, no, they, that, that makes perfect sense that they would do that. So... Let's talk about the Isle of the Lions of the Sea. I think that this names a specific island um, here in Nova Scotia. 
And, you know, when, when you consider the habits of privateers, right, uh, you know, if they were allied and they shared information and if if we had um, you had Danish privateers who called themselves uh, the Lions of the Sea um, or more specifically, if you had, say, someone like Francis Bacon and I'm going to say Walter Raleigh in particular, uh, who suddenly just dis- decided to call themselves the Lions of the Sea. Uh, this would make a whole lot of sense. So wouldn't this actually name a nearby island? And where would it be? Especially if it was an island, uh, and you, everyone knows where I'm going with this, having a history <laughs> of deposits <laughs> and withdrawals, right? And hopefully extra deposits that haven't been withdrawled, w- w- withdrawn. We'll, we'll put it that way. Um, here's an image uh, from the map. Um, it's a misspelling of Moru, uh, which is French for cod, and it's spelled as Moldu. And there's a reason for that. Uh, when we substitute using the at-bash su- system between simple and reverse, V can be E, or this U can be an E, we have an anagram for me, Leo. And there's also another anagram on there, if you remember from uh, episode one, where he referred to himself as the Rex of the Sea. So, um, Also, when we consider that the Stuart family crest is a lion, suddenly things start making a lot more sense. Wow. So we have multiple connections. And again, this this is circumstantial evidence, but we keep piling it up and it, and, and it can't be ignored. Uh-huh. So let's take a look at the compass measure here. And um, we'll be wrapping things up here uh, fairly soon, gang. Uh, what I did was looking at these tools for navigation on the map, the compass uh, or calipers, um, what I did was I copied it and pasted it on the map with transparency. And I, I, I made it black and white for the purposes of, of, uh, you know, contrast so we could more easily see. And what I did was I copied it directly, directly in situ of where it was. And then I'm just digitally moved it directly North using Photoshop. And this is what happened. It perfectly joins the T of that towel I talked about earlier. Uh-huh. With the S in aisles, it points to directly both of them perfectly. So this is why we have the little loop above T and S and S and T. Uh, it's supposed to draw our attention to uh, the idea and the purpose of, of, of these calipers. And so if you can find that distance using a pair of calipers on, on the map, um, then you can see these TS clues, what other correlations with that specific distance might be here? Well, um, I started looking for other signposts of, of, uh, the Rosie cross. And so using that same measure, I just kind of moved it over a little bit. And suddenly I saw a correlation between two A's, uh, our AA symbol. I'll talk about that here at the end of this slide. Um, but AA is, is highly significant uh, in the headpieces and frontispieces of uh, the works of Shakespeare and Francis Bacon. And so what happened was it aligns with the letters A in Moraines are uh, from the Isle of the uh, Lions of the Sea and the letter Bay in Bay of Many Isles. They line up perfectly. So it connects these two. Okay. Um, so I wondered, is this the location of this island, this Isle of the Lions of the Sea? Is it in the Bay of Many Isles? Um, and if so, it would be represented by that letter A in the word bay, if everyone follows that, uh-huh. uh, because, because that's what the calipers are are, are pointing to. And again, so th- to uh, those of you not familiar with um, the AA symbol in, in the Rosie Cross literature, uh, this is from uh, the headpiece of the first uh, publication of Hamlet. And here you can see the A in the light and then the A in the shadow uh, representing Athena and Apollo, the spear shakers. Uh, they were, you know, uh, mythologically speaking, they were known to shake the spear of light in people's eyes uh, to get them to see the truth. And that's what the Rosy Cross and that's what Bacon was all about. I'm so, glad you brought that up because I had forgotten as well uh, the symbolism behind the AA. That um, 
Yeah, I had completely forgotten that you had you had pointed this out before on one of your other shows. Yeah, yeah, and you know, um, you know, I'm I'm indebted to uh, you know, the work of of you know, say Peter Dawkins and so many others who have pointed this out over the last you know couple several hundred years actually <laughs> that that the letter A A uh, represented that idea. And my most recent research uh, also has a, a different interpretation of the second A, but we're going to leave that for another time, for another evening. But yeah, that's that's the general. And here you wow. can see the A again. Look at the calipers, and I extended the lines, and then you have the ruler, uh -huh. the giant letter A, the center of the yeah. map. While you've been doing this, I've I've actually had your map up, and I've been following you, uh, you know, as you're showing it on yours, and then I've been looking at and zooming in, and it's it's remarkable. There's so much to this map. It's unreal. And, and really again, unreal. thanks for saying that, Jeff, because um, even though tonight, gang, I'm actually going to demonstrate to you how this map leads directly to Oak Island, Nova Scotia. Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg of what's on this map. Um, and, you know, so hopefully sometime in the future, uh, I'll be able to share more with you uh, what, what what's on here. But um, yeah, thanks for saying that, Jeff. And that's what I was hoping people would do is pull up uh, this image, uh, you know, from the website. I, I, I make sure that I have high resolution images there. Uh, it's very, very detailed. I mean, it so comes in very, very clear. Yes. And um, uh, I don't know if Judy is watching tonight, but I, I sent uh, it was a different map, but another high resolution image to Judy Rudabush and it crashed your computer. So if you're watching tonight, Julie, I'm sorry. <laughs> Judy, I uh, didn't mean to crash a computer with that image, but, um, but yeah, you know, so we know in summary, putting all these clues together and using the tools that are on the map, the, the compass, you know, symbolically joins Champlain with Port du Rossignol. Uh, the compass roses join Rossignol with the Bay of Many Isles, right? Uh -huh. So the compass also joins the Isle of the Lions of the Sea with the Bay of Many Isles. So we can use the clues as navigational directions. And um, it seems to me uh, that we can make, you know, very specific inferences here. So the compass points in 67 degrees south from the compass roses. Also, you know, again, Port du Rossignol, Champlain. I think that's been pretty uh, well established. The uh -huh. chart can be used to travel to Port du Rossignol. That is our starting point. We travel there. And then what we do is we chart a course and we set out at 33 degrees as the course direction, according to, I mean, these are the mistakes, right? In the compass roses yeah. that also join, um, uh, you know, Port du Rossignol with the Bay of Many Isles. 33 degrees is going to lead us from Port du Rossignol to the Bay of Many Isles. And so because it joins with the two roses, Here's the problem. We don't know the distance. How far do we travel from Port du Rossignol in order to get to the Bay of Many Isles? And hopefully the Isle of the Sea Lions, Lions of the Sea. So we have a ruler here. Uh -huh. So now all we have to do is measure how far we have to go from Port du Rossignol to the Isle of the Lions of the Sea in the Bay of Many Isles. Here's how we do it, gang. We use the exact same technique. I, I copied this ruler directly off uh, the map kept it exactly the same uh, contrast for for better imagery. And so what I did was I placed um, the edge of the ruler at the very nexus of the navigational lines that converge here in Port du Rossignol, letters, letter O uh, from the legend. And then I measured to that A in the Bay of Many Isles. And what we have is a distance of 38 miles. As you can see, the, I mean, there's a graduated, uh, the, the distance gets longer and farther apart the farther you go along the um, ruler. And I think this is the reason why. It, it ends up being, when I calculated it, exactly 38. And <laughs> once I actually uh, started doing some calculations, this is, this is the part that you can't make up. 38 miles, uh, first of all, is obviously those of you who watch the show regularly know that that's the double tau, 19, uh -huh. 19 and simple cipher, right? Well, it's also 33 nautical miles, <laughs> 33 bacon. So uh, once again, and, and I mm. wish, you know, uh, as John always says, you can't make this no. stuff up. Yeah. So what do we do next? Well, we just chart the course. 
we're going to, I plopped a point just in the center of Port du Rossignol, which is modern day Liverpool, Nova Scotia, everyone. I just put a point uh, using the ruler tool from Google Earth. And I plotted the course 33 degrees north. That's the way it works with a compass. You know, it works the same way in Google Earth. So, you know, zero degrees is straight north. And as you go 33 degrees, that's the direction we head. I traveled 38 miles or 33 nautical miles um, on a course at exactly 33 degrees north. Now, obviously, uh, in order to get to see how the line goes across land, uh, the actual travel <laughs> via ship is going to require triangulation out in the ocean, uh, out in the sea, and then around uh, the landmass. But the principle is it was well known and, and easily understood at the time. So here you see the close up dropped a point. I, again, this was just random right here in, in Port de Rossignol. And I charted the course. And here you can see how it travels north and it end, actually ends up in Mahone Bay near Chester in a tiny little island uh, in the North Atlantic. And, and if we had a, a, a GPS uh, talking to us, we'd be arriving at our destination, Oak Island, Nova Scotia. Wow. And uh, you can't make this. Uh, no, you can't. Wow. So I don't know, gang. Um, what do you think? Uh, it, it's one of the, um, and, and again, let's just say that was the first location I found indicated by this map. So I was going to say there, you know, looking at this map and all the stuff that's in there, and we kind of mentioned it earlier, there is if, and, and again, you go back to that same repeatable, repeatable, You've said it quite a bit. John says this quite a bit. Is it repeatable? And if you can find that again in another, you know, another thing, uh, uh, you know, looking at some of the symbols and the lines on here. Mm -hmm. um, but already you've taken two different sides and put them all together and it both come to the conclusion of taking you to the. Um, and again, I'm going to go back to looking at the name because these names are all new to me. Um, right. Rosenall, Rosenall, yeah, Rosenall, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. And then, but again, there are no coincidences. When he does that, you know, when he makes that that that, um, uh, you know, that's got the scale of the ruler across the bottom and how yes. it changes. That that means something. It it wasn't by oops, you know. Well, I need to make it a little longer. No, it was he did it on purpose uh, for a particular reason. Yeah. Well, that, that's just it. In that's in me. the other map work I've I've, I've done, okay. Jeff, and um, hopefully someday I'm, I'm going to show you um, the 1611 map uh, on your show. I would love to do that. Okay, uh, that'd be awesome. Show you the original location of the money pit. I think people would be interested in that. Um, uh, yeah, I'll... <laughs> <laughs> that'd be interesting. So, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> just just a tad. But, you know, it doesn't end there. You know, this this piece of the puzzle was was one that I had been missing when I first started my work looking at the plaque of Shakespeare's funerary monument. I was intent upon uh, the directions that uh, actually tell you where to look on Oak Island. So I had been missing that piece between how do I get from the plaque to Nova Scotia and Oak Island? Well, it was Champlain's map all along. And I didn't, I, I, I missed that piece of evidence. And as I learned how to do all of this, suddenly uh, I, I, I just started to follow uh, the clues where they led me. And um, once you get to Oak Island gang, um, the cipher texts of, of the plaque, just spell it out. Uh, you know, they say, you know, he refers to his uh, cone stone Heracles. Uh, in um in as soon as i saw cone stones i mean a bunch of oak island uh, fans are here uh what do cone stones make you think of gang nolan's cross nolan's cross as it turns out it was never intended to be a cross oh uh, fred, fred to be a towel? no fred fred nolan is a i mean was brilliant uh in terms of 
uh, being a, a treasure hunter. Treasure hunters are about obfuscation. You want to throw your, your competition off. And so he recognized there was a symbol here that they, that they formed. And so what does he do? He substitutes a more well-known symbol for the one that was actually there. And so he moves a couple of cones here and there using a skid steer, a, a skidder, and he's able to turn it into a cross. And then he says, oh, here's the headstone I, I dug in the center. Here's another stone, and it looks like a perfect cross. Uh, in reality, it was a keystone shape with an extra stone off it. Everyone, that's the keystone asterism at the center of the constellation of Hercules. Where is the constellation of Hercules? Directly between Boots and Cygnus. Now, what constellations have been most prominent in all of the Oak Island theories uh, when it comes to constellations, Boots and, and Cygnus? So um, that entire region of the sky gang is, is, is highly significant in terms of bacon, in terms of Oak Island. Um, Amy, uh, I'm going to put this up. Uh, did Fred move things? 100%. Uh, th this is something everyone that, that uh, was really well known about uh, Fred Nolan. And listen, I, when I say this, I, I'm not being derogatory. I'm not saying anything negative about Mr. Nolan at all. In fact, I'm saying he was really smart to do this because this is what, uh, you know, good uh, treasure hunters do. They don't <laughs> let anyone know that they're on the hunt. They don't let anyone know what their clues are. Um, instead, they kind of try to throw people off, right? And, <clears throat> well, Fred Nolan was known to not just identify, you know, prominent markers on the island, particularly stones that had carvings on them and messages on them. He would record where they were. Uh, he would, you know, record them on, on his maps, and then he would remove them for safekeeping. Huh. Now, we take someone who did that repeatedly, and then suddenly he makes this huge discovery of a cross and announces it to the world. That's a little bit out of character, wouldn't you say? Yes, yes. When okay. he's hiding things naturally, yes, that does. That's very out of character. So what I see is obfuscation, right? Mm -hmm. I see him saying misdirection. Oh, yep. hey, look, it's a cross, everyone. And, and as soon as you have the image of one of the most yeah. popular symbols in the world right. in your head, you can't get rid of it. And so right. now everyone tries to account for Nolan's cross when, in fact, it was probably uh, Nolan's keystone. The, the, the asterism at the center of uh, the constellation of Hercules. The directions then say, go to the duplicate knee. Now, Hercules was known as the kneeling one. When you, you can actually overlay, when you identify where the original locations of Nolan's cross were, you can overlay Hercules on Oak Island. You then go to the knee of Hercules, and that's where one of the chambers are. Uh, mm. Just one. No, just one. <laughs> I'm right. writing. I was writing this down because that's the first I've really heard. Now I've heard of Cygnus before, and how it was used. Peter Amundsen talked. Uh, Peter Amundsen talked about that as well. Yes. But you know, looking at those and and the um, and I think even was it even uh, Travis Taylor? I think even talked about that. Um, yeah, and, and Travis talked about um, uh, Taurus as well, and uh -huh. uh, um, which uh, again has its role to play. But uh, and that was one of the. Um, uh, constellations that that Chris Dona was very preoccupied with was uh -huh. Taurus and how how it related to Mahone Bay. Yeah, there was uh, someone else had said um, uh, talking about some of the other islands, Frog Island, and some of the other ones that are around. And some of those mm -hmm. in I think it was in Travis's presentation, he talked about those being key as well. Mm -hmm. There being certain points. Um, yes, yes, and um, with other maps. Uh, a couple of the other islands um, have been highlighted in my work. Uh, that obviously, I haven't, I, I've been just kind of uh, quietly plugging away. And, uh, you know, this is the stuff that I, I, I share with people publicly. Um, but, you know, at this point, I, I'm willing to say that Nova Scotia 
and particularly Mahone Bay, um, was intended to be Bacon's New Atlantis that he had written about. Um, I'm 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 convinced of that. I don't think that Oak Island was a one-off uh-uh. by any stretch. Uh, there there are there's more than one uh, significant location on Oak Island, and other, you know, a lot of the theorists who who have uh, been in the war room have said the exact same thing I've said. Uh, you know, when we chat privately and talk about it, we all agree there's more than one location, significant location on Oak Island. And to that end, Oak Island is not alone in terms of <laughs> significant locations right. uh, in Nova Scotia or in Newfoundland, for that matter. So, um, yeah, I've talked about, you know, that the fact that, you know, that you're looking at Zena's map and like Marty says, Zena Helprin's map, if true. And again, he always says it if true, um, you know, talks about the um, the next island over and it's Frog Island, I believe. And it talks about there's that line that points to it and says 1347. But the way it's spelled out, it's not spelled out or not written out as a date. Everybody calls it the 1347 map. It's not written out like a date. And it's it's pointing to a particular place on that island. (laughs) <laughs> and you and there's a cipher with 1347 is there not oh there is yeah um <laughs> <laughs> you already knew the answer to that come on I, yeah i know i was kind of leaving <laughs> you there but I, mean, I just wanted that confirmation from you because i don't think i've mentioned that to you before but um yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just amazing that uh this whole like you said this whole area it's not just oak island no it's not and and you know <laughs> um it I, I pulled my Oak Island uh, uh, treasure map book because of more information that I found um, that, you know, in the new version, I'm, I'm, I'm putting the X on the map for the original location of the money pit, as mm-hmm. well as an X on the map for the offset vault. Okay. Wow. So you, um, in, in addition to that, um, I did uh, end up doing it. it when I was on your show, I think the first time you, you would ask me about Xena's map and I said, uh-huh. I have looked at it, you know, it, it, it's, it's not on my radar. Uh, I, I don't, um, I, I didn't have a reason to consider that uh, there were any Baconian ciphers there, you know, uh-huh. that I had no context, right? Uh, I follow the clues where they lead me. And if there's context, then I'll look, uh, well, um, you know, uh, one of our friends had, had, had passed along, um, other information that supposedly was contemporary with Xena's map. And given the details and, and the clues on it, uh, I, I identified Baconian ciphers all over what I was given. Um, and if this was part and parcel with Xena's map, I decided I would take a look at it. And I've included that analysis in the new version of my book as well. Uh, so uh, w- it's funny you bring up the date um, <laughs> because that date, uh, there's a reason why it wasn't written in number form and it was spelled out. Uh, in, 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 in word form is because every single one of those words that comprise the date is a cipher signature of someone specific. And I'm not going to get it. it. Guess what gang? It's not Francis Bacon, uh, yep. but it was definitely um, his, his circle of, of friends and, and uh-huh. family. So yeah, I, 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 at this point, I believe that, um, uh, that that map is how do I say this? It's authentic in that it was not faked. If it was faked, it was faked by someone who knows Bacon ciphers better than I do. Uh, uh, I'll okay. put it that way. Interesting. Uh, wow. uh, but it, it, I think it's authentic. But it was created by uh, none other than um, Walter Raleigh's son, Watt. Huh. In in my opinion, and I, I, that's as much as I'm willing to get into so i like what uh, ao says here does this mean the fellowship might be digging on other islands in the area looking for treasure after they have solved this oak island mystery i don't know they're going to dig for treasure but they certainly should be looking for other clues and answers yeah you know um i'll I'll say this um uh i i believe there's uh uh, one of the ciphertext uh, Bacon states that he sank a ship purposefully uh, off the southern coast of the island. Um, and I believe I, I know the location of that. Um, wow. And so aside from, 
you know, just the islands themselves. Uh, there's, there are any number of, of, of locations in Mahone Bay and the surrounding area that uh, would definitely produce some significant fines. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep, I agree. I'm just looking back to see what other questions. Um... <laughs> I, I'm looking at uh, C. Fulton. <laughs> Oh, come on. Just say the names. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. There's some other stuff that came up here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jan says she is doubtful of Xena's map. And, and again, it's, yeah. it's one of those things where it, I don't know that it can be proved whether or not it's true. No, um, no. Yeah. If they, if they take the map and they actually find, you know, they keep talking about lot eight. Uh, they keep talking about the hatch the hole under the hatch and all these different things like this. If they actually find something significant in one of these spots, does that add validity to the map itself? Yes, it right. does. But does yeah. that still make the map true? I, I don't know. I, I just. And see, that's just it, Jeff. You know, it's why I never looked at it in the first place. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's crudely I, made. Yeah. I, and, and honestly, my analysis of it, uh, you know, I'll give you the reader's digest condensed version. Um, was that it was hastily made and it was made by someone who didn't um, understand the methodologies uh, that uh, more complex minds would have uh, used. For example, if it had been created by Anthony Bacon or Francis Bacon, it would have been far more accurate, even if it was hastily done. Mm -hmm. there, oh, there, yeah. there, there would have been clues worked into there that indicated those specific locations that were indicated, yep. labeled yep. on maps. It almost looked to me like it was somebody had drawn it looking at a better drawing, something much more detailed, and was trying to hurry up and make it and get it done so he could take it with him. I, I wish I could comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, That's okay. I, let's right. say I, I'm, in, I'm inclined to agree with you there, Jeff. Um, All right, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. That's, Jeff, what, that, John, that's exactly John what it seems to say. John, John would agree with me that, um, yeah, we, we, we both would agree with that i think yeah that's um, exactly what it says to me when i look at it yeah and and um you know when i talk about uh, my knee of hercules point um mm -hmm. there's a point on xena's map that correlates with it perfectly and the label um I'll let, let's put it this way it it refers to uh the chamber uh under under the ground uh but when you when you calculate the values of the words other than the chamber of, uh, it comes out to 111, which is Bacon in, in K cipher. Uh, it's Bacon's chamber, and it correlates perfectly with my knee of Hercules point. So uh. there's, that. there's that. So, you know, uh, after I found all of this gang, uh, I said, okay, you know, I, I figured it out. I'm done. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't need to look into Oak Island anymore. I'm just going to keep looking at, uh, you know, decrypting all of the different stuff that we're finding now with uh, the King James Bible and, and, uh, all of the other sources, the Fama Fraternitatis is just so rich, full of information that I, I really can't wait to, um, you know, bring all of that out to you. Um, but then suddenly, I'm looking at the King James Bible and, and William Russell, uh, Jason Mercer and John all know this. Suddenly I got sucked back into the Oak Island vortex. And that's when <laughs> I, I found uh, the map information that leads to uh, the location of the original money pit. So, wow. Yeah. You know, and it's, that's, that's, uh, that's one of the intriguing things is that uh, there's so many different things that lead to this, but in one of the, you know, and it was a comment I, I kind of put together our question, or I guess it, in a, and I wrote it down here because I'm watching your shows. See, and I've watched them for quite a while now. And one of the things like John always says is repeatable, repeatable. And, and that brings to mind to me that in, in when Bacon does something in a cipher, he does it repeatedly. Yes. And it's it's almost like I really don't want you to miss this clue. So I'm going to put it in several different places 
all you have to do is figure it out and it's going to tell you the same thing but just over and over over yeah. and over again and it's like tell me come on get it you know i yeah. <laughs> it's, well you know it's amazing that that happens at this point, it's like he's grabbing me by the scruff of the neck, John or Jeff, and he's just like saying, <laughs> "Hey, stupid! Here it is again." You know, <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, okay, leave me alone. I get it. I see it." Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, it, it's about redundancy. The redundancy of message of the message. He wanted the world to eventually discover and find out that you know what his true heritage was first and foremost. He yep. was the son yep, of Mary Queen of Scots and, and Francis the Second. That's the message that is always repeated times 10. And um, the other fact is that, <clears throat> you know, here, you know, I, I, I turn my back on, I, I'm like, okay, Oak Island research. I, that was fun, but I'm done. I'm moving on. And then all of a sudden it comes up again, you know? So what does this tell us? It, it, it tells us uh, here's a really good explanation of why people, you know, why even today we, we keep finding, English artifacts and French artifacts. Uh -huh. Who was he? He 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 was the king of France and England, <laughs> secretly, uh, and, and you know, operating under both governments. He, I mean, uh, this is what he was doing. Um, and so, all of a sudden, all of the archaeo archaeological evidence makes sense. Uh, and again, like you said, redundancy of of messages. It just keeps repeating. Yeah. Yep. The whole King James uh, version of the Bible translation is just, you know, John has shared some stuff with me, and so have you, yeah. some things yeah. that you found in there. And it just, I had no idea. First of all, I didn't know that he had done that, that he had right. done the, the, the uh, that version. Um, and then, you know, you had mentioned on the last show, when you were answering the Q&A, when you did the Q&A, you had mentioned about the fact that, you know, he had kind of taken some liberties with how he was putting his ciphers in there but making <laughs> kind of changing it a little bit uh to fit that and i had again um i had no idea that that was taking place or that uh, and and so again here i am the student in your classroom uh i once once even even doing your co-host I, I i'm sitting here going oh yeah what am oh i'm supposed to be doing co-host duties here because <laughs> i'm in your classroom and i'm learning again right, and right. it's just amazing that but now looking at, the, I, I can't look at the King James Version any other way now, other than to know that it's a book of, it's a, it's a biblical book, but it's also a book of ciphers. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And, um, and he really was uh, striving, you know, to create the definitive, you know, English church, you know, Bible. Um, but, you know, he also, like, like you said, he took liberties and then he actually had the source information, you know, uh, you know, using footnotes in, in uh -huh. the ex right. explanatory notes in the margins and so on. Um, so yeah, you know, thanks for saying that. Um, but, oh, I'm looking at a couple of, uh, thank you, Sharon. Uh, good compliment. Thank you so much. Uh, that's very humbling. Um, Thank you for, for the compliment. I appreciate it. I, I want to get to Jenny's question because, uh -huh. you know, we all know Jenny always asks, you know, really great questions and makes really great points. Um, do I think the French and English were working together on the island? No. I think they were working against each other, Jenny. Um, and I, I think that, uh, frankly, it, it in my mind, it's a strong possibility, given what we now know, what I now know, that that was one of the big reasons between, uh, you know, all of the warring and battling over that region. That it was actually about uh, what Bacon had secreted away uh, in, in his treasure chamber and, and in his, uh, um, well, sepulcher, I'll put it that way, uh, because he's there. Uh, all of the people who think that the Ark of the Covenant is there... I, I think what what has happened is uh, a misinterpretation of of the symbols there. Uh, you know, you have Francis Bacon in the King James Bible uh, talking about the construction of the Ark of the Covenant, and he spells it A R K E. And the reason he spells it that way, even though it's spelled differently everywhere else, um, is uh, well, it's it equals thirty three 
67 and 85, you know, um, so in, 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 in simple reverse and K. So it's because he is the arc. He's, you know, the repository of, of knowledge, the repository of, of something that is sacred in terms of, of knowledge and his heritage. And so that's what is on Oak Island, in my opinion. Um, I, I think it was, uh, Amy, who had asked, you know, what do I think is there? Uh, he, he tells us in, in the ciphertext, you know, it's it's a copy of the first folio in his own handwriting as Shakespeare. Uh, it's his, his uh, royal birth records are there. Uh, he also deposited some silver and gold, uh, you know, from his privateering days. And so you also have uh, the message on the Bacon Funerary Monument that states that Sir Francis Drake also made a secret deposit on the Isle of the Lions of, of the Sea of, of silver and gold. So, you know, there, there, there are, there's more than one location on the island that, and, and, you know, they're not going to find it by, you know, me using Google earth and, um, <laughs> Stephanie, <laughs> um, you know, uh, you know, you're not going to find find these locations by me putting an X on the map or anyone else putting an X on the map using Google Earth. Google Earth is off by up to between two and and five meters, right? Uh, and so, how far off do you have to be in order to miss one foot? You know, uh, they, they sank. Right. What was it? Five cans. This yeah, last, last season? season five of them went in ten yep. feet and missed every time. Yep. All right, so I, I give them an X on the map, and they they you know drill a hole maybe this big, and don't find anything. I'm like, eh, all right, they're gonna find what they're looking for using the technology they have on the island, gang. They're they're going to find it using a uh, deep uh, penetrating radar. Uh, they're gonna find it using the Mulan technology. Yep. Or uh, you know, when I say, oh, by the way, here's where the offset chamber is, they'll look there. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah, this, I, uh, new on technology is, is going to be key uh, this season, uh, going into season ten here, and uh, and now you know we we've been, in a, I was talking about this on the little news uh, clip that I did the other day, or a couple. Well, actually, it was about a week or a week and a half ago now. Um, talking about the fact that the uh, mining company is now on the island, mm -hmm. and Rick talked about that very thing. Yeah. Um, that he, if he gets a hard target, he wants to tunnel to it, not put a case on down. Not drill well, they will probably drill some holes just to kind of confirm there's a void, but um he yeah. wants a tunnel to it. That's significant. That's it, really significant. It really is. It really is. And <clears throat> I, I'm so glad, you know, that he said that, uh, simply because mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, constantly, you know, drilling cans in the ground and without knowing what's underneath there. Uh, when I, you know, have read messages that state what's supposed to be underneath there uh it it, it scares the hell out of me <laughs> you know yeah. of what's and what that parchment they brought up you know a piece of parchment that was brought up That's a long time ago right and i'm and i'm a worried i'm worried that it's that it's everything that's down there is damaged now right same here and we may oh we got a bucket full of soggy papers that we can't read <laughs> all right all right uh, guys and, this is yeah. all it was and we can't Otherwise. read it we don't know what it said it gets all ruined now and yeah, yeah that's my fear that 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 bothers me a lot yeah yeah me I'm too i'm not sure who put this one up i don't have a name it says um I'm talking about the measure of degree oh wow that's that's interesting if you measure one degree north from the pleiades standing on the pillars of hercules it leads one directly to Oak Island at the precise angle of the conical stones. There's much more to this. Right. That's interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure who said that because uh, I, I don't have uh, Facebook up. I can't tell. That's yeah. why I always wish when people, when you, when you, if you're on the Facebook side, put your name on there so we can acknowledge who uh, made yeah. the comment. Definitely want to give people credit yeah. for that. William Russell, Bill Russell, he's <laughs> Pirate's Diary. <laughs> Well, William, you would know, my friend. I mean, you're you're one of the ones decrypting it. So, uh, yeah, um, about the offset chamber, um, I'm a firm believer. You know, that was uh, one of Marty's, you know, uh, mm -hmm. belief 
strong beliefs that there was an oxygen chamber. And, and I've always, I've always had that same belief simply because um, I, I think that was it. Let me put it this way. If uh, the uh, legend of the discovery of the money pit uh, has a semblance of truth to it, and if there really was a 90 foot stone, I believe that was the true purpose of the 90 foot stone was to have those encrypted directions of where to tunnel to the offset chamber. I, uh, the decryption that's been put out uh, under popular belief, I think is complete and utter nonsense in my opinion. Yeah. That offset chamber now being one that would probably be as Marty described it, uh, would be up above uh, the flood tunnel area so that it doesn't get damaged when the when the trap is set and the flooding is happens or any other type of flooding may happen uh, in the tunnel system as as right. weak as they are to begin with and in, in, you know to uh, to flooding. So this would keep it up out of that area. So it'd be a, a Marty used his fist in the air like this, so it'd be a tunnel going up to another chamber up right. above that area yeah. so that it doesn't get damaged. By anything that doesn't that make so much more sense doesn't that make so yeah, much more well, absolutely sense? as soon yeah. as he said it i'm like how come i didn't think of that yeah that makes total sense well because we're not engineers <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true i'm not <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm not yeah so yeah, yeah yeah so and that's what you are working on ah, i see okay that's uh very interesting to uh to know hmm. yeah thanks awesome. penny appreciate you very much um yeah, gang. All right. Well, I don't know. Anything else, Jeff? Anything else, gang? Uh, before we wrap things up, we've got to. I knew we would be going uh, probably a good solid hour and a half here tonight. And we've, we've, yeah, done I'm going to be spending some more time looking at this map. Um, I, I wish, I, I wish that I had the, uh, ability that you have to look and see things on a, I, you know, in that cipher sense. But this map is so detailed. Uh, Oh, Jeff. It just I, has to be so much more to it than it meets the eye. Oh, there is. There is. And yeah, eyes to Maybe. see. I love looking hey, at Patty, this. Patty, thank you. Thank you so much. Not related to Sir Francis Drake, but actually my sister. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks Pay. Um, thanks, gang. Yeah, you know, going to go ahead and wrap things up then. Um, and, you know, Jeff, the, the thing is, it, it you can develop the eyes to see as, as one uh, viewer just, you know, called it. Um, and William, uh, Russell, uh, you know, as, as a guest on my show, you know, a couple months ago, as he said, he says, he says, Jake, you were absolutely right. It's not rocket science. It's just simple math, <laughs> you know? And what, once you start learning the rules of, of how just simple addition or, or angles are being used, suddenly you can just see it. Uh -huh. So, so I, I, you know, I, again, and I constantly, uh, I, all my stuff is open source. I encourage pre people to take what I've done and, and start applying it and do it themselves. Yep. Uh, I have a drawing of the pyramids in their manual that has the queen's chamber, which is off sub chamber. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, you're right. Uh, Amy, the, the queen's chamber of the great pyramid, uh, uh, of Giza is, is definitely an offset chamber. Yeah. It, uh -huh. it, it makes sense that it would be a very sim similar idea. Thank yep. you. And they, they found another one with the muon technology. So, yep. yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dorian, like, Dorian yeah. says simple for some, but in, <laughs> but in my head, two plus two equals turtle. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's kind of like uh, me right there. Yeah, it's, it's uh, definitely. Yeah. Jan, can I go back to the island and have a serious talk with the guys? Uh, I'll see what I can do, Jan. Um, you know, it's like uh, you have to remember it's like uh, they are so busy and uh, their schedules are booked up, you know, months and months in advance. And um, so, you know. I, I know I know some of this information is definitely on the radar for me, so we'll see what I was happens. Say they'd be foolish if it wasn't. Well, well it's you something know, Rick said. You have to look into these things. Well, you know, and that's that's one of the things I, I love about Rick is that you know he's very open minded and he um 
is always, you know, really looking for more information. He's always looking for the truth. And, um, and like I said, you know, I did just, one of the things I, I think that they, they, um, like about my information is, is my approach of how I'm just following the clues where they lead me as opposed to, okay, I'm going to come up with a theory and, uh, sh- you know, shotgun approach, shoot it against the wall and see what kind of a pattern appears. Yeah, uh, right. that I'm just, you know, step by step leading it. Thank you, Stephanie, very much. Curtis, thank you. Um, uh, oh, thanks. Paula, as, as always, thank you. Um, I, I, I still like that two plus two equals turtle. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Jenny, um, I, I think this says something about you though. It's like, what, what happens when, when, you know, you, you can hear colors. <laughs> two two smells like purple to me. <laughs> Too funny. Too funny. All right, yeah. gang. Thanks so much. Hey, Jeff, um, uh, hang out here for a minute and, uh, okay. Um, I want to shoot the breeze with you as always uh, here for a couple of minutes. I don't want to keep you too long this evening. I want to be respectful of your time. And uh, I want to thank you very, very much uh, for helping me out this evening. Oh, it's my um, pleasure. Well, first of all, it's always great just to hang out with you. Uh, gang, If it, and I'm pretty sure that most of the people here by the looks of the names are already members of the best yeah. Oak Island group on the internet. Uh, uh, the Curse of Oak Island and beyond. Um, and so it, it, be sure to check out uh, Jeff's uh, show each week. Uh, Jeff, you do an amazing job. And I, I just oh, want to, I, I just want to yeah, say, thank I you. have a great team of people. I tell you, honestly, uh, Linda and Jan, uh, they, they make it oh, gosh. Uh, without them too. And Tom Burns, uh, you know, everybody that does and, and Henry DeWitt helps out. I mean, if it yeah. weren't for them, we have a team of people making it all happen. And that's truly why the Facebook group is, <laughs> is what it is today. It's, know, it's amazing. It's time. amazing. Um, and, uh, just like you said, you know, an amazing group of people, uh, speaking of Tom, uh, messaged me today and asked me about this map, uh, mm. cause, uh, he was being shown around up there, uh, you know, and, and, uh, I've been really following, uh, your adventures up there closely on in the group. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have a nice show about uh, everything that Tom and Henry did. I, there's. Hundreds. They've shown a few, but there's hundreds of pictures that they've taken. We're going to have a I show know. with just them two on and uh, go through all of it. I know. That's going to be <laughs> awesome. I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it, Jeff. Might have to be a two-parter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, my friend. Uh, going to pop us out of here. And uh, gang, uh, thank you for joining us again. Uh, I appreciate you all very much. I uh, had a really good viewership this evening. Uh, and, and guess what? We we topped out at guess how many live viewers? Thirty three. Nice. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? <laughs> we, we had bacon viewers, bacon viewers tonight. So, bacon all viewers. right, Jeff. Thank you so much, uh, viewers. Thank you. I uh, appreciate you guys. I appreciate all your support. And uh, keep on keeping on, and uh, be good to each other. Uh, right, next time, a couple weeks. Bye now. <laughs>